Do you use social media? I'm willing to bet you have at least one social media account. Chapter two talks about interpersonal communication and social media. But before we get into that, let's discuss what mediated communication is. Mediated communication is connecting through an electronic medium. You use mediated communication anytime you send an email, call somebody, or send a text message. Social media is a form of mediated communication. The textbook defines social media as online communities such as Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. Mediated communication and face-to-face -face communication, as we discussed it in Chapter 1, have three similarities. First of all, they have the same goals. Recall that we communicate for four reasons, to fulfill physical needs, identity needs, social needs, and practical goals. We fulfill physical needs by using emojis. Keeping blogs or online diaries is a way of us fulfilling identity needs. Our social needs are met when we use Facebook or when we text our friends. Finally, practical goals are met when we email our instructor to find out about an assignment or when there's an emergency and we call 911. Mediated and face-to-face -face communication also have a similar process. Think about the components of the communication model as we discussed in Chapter 1. All these components are still relevant when you send someone a text or update your Facebook status. Mediated and face-to-face -face communication also have similar principles. Recall that communication can be intentional or unintentional. For example, think of when you accidentally send a text message to the wrong person. Whoops. This can lead to the second principle that communication is irreversible. Once you've sent that text message, there's no way to get it back. It is also impossible not to communicate via mediated communication. Think about when you don't respond to a text message. The person who's texted you may interpret your silence as you being busy or that you're ignoring them. Mediated and face-to-face -face communication aren't exactly the same, though. There are three major differences between the two. First, there is the aspect of mediated communication having leaner messages. Leanness, in this case, refers to the lack of nonverbal information. Think of when you receive a text message that reads, K. Okay, what does this mean? Does it just mean OK? Or is this person mad about something? If you can't see the other person's face or hear their tone of voice, it is hard to tell if they are happy, sad, angry, if they're being serious, or just joking around. Nonverbal cues help to clarify meanings and feelings. Mediated communication also has variable synchronicity. Conversations can be synchronous or asynchronous. In synchronous conversations, the communicators are connected in real time, like talking on the phone or video conferencing. In asynchronous conversations, there is a time delay between messages, such as when texting or emailing. One message is sent at a time, and the receiver may respond within seconds, hours, or even days. The last difference is that mediated communication has a permanent record. This can be both good and bad. It can be beneficial because you are able to reread old text messages or retrieve homework documents from your email. However, celebrities have a difficult time dealing with nude photos and sex videos. Also, think of how Snapchat allows posts for only 24 hours, but your friends can still screenshot your post before it gets deleted. Now that you have a firm understanding of what mediated communication is, let's talk about some of its consequences. Mediated communication leads to disinhibition, meaning people are usually more honest and blunt in what they say. It would typically be easier to tell your crush you like them via phone or text instead of face-to-face. -face. Mediated communication also leads to hyperpersonal communication, which means that the conversations can get really personal really fast, like people that meet online and talk about anything and everything and fall in love within a week. Some benefits of mediated communication are that you have the opportunity to meet and interact with more people. You can contact anyone in the world via mediated channels, as opposed to only talking to people you see in person every day. Because of mediated communication, you are also able to sustain and enrich relationships by talking to people you don't see every day or who live far away. One other benefit is the many types of social support you can get online. There are many online communities that you can be a part of in just a few clicks. Of course, as with anything else, Mediated communication comes with its drawbacks. Only interacting through mediated channels can lead to superficial relationships, 
where parties don't really care about one another, or social isolation, like people who only have online friends and none to interact with in person. Relational deterioration and jealousy also happens a lot due to social media. One final drawback is that social media makes it very easy for stalking and harassment to take place. Social media isn't all bad, but you must have social media competence in order to protect yourself and foster positive relationships. To maintain positive relationships, make sure you respect others' need for undivided attention. That is, put your phone away when having a conversation with someone face-to-face. -face. Also watch your tone and don't intrude on bystanders. Remember that mediated communication has leaner messages, which can result in miscommunication. You can protect yourself by thinking thoroughly before you post anything online. Remember, it is permanent. You should also verify what you see online because not everything is real or true. And also balance the time you spend interacting with people online and in person. If you have questions about anything covered here, you can watch this video again, reread the chapter, or contact me. See you in class.